Welcome to lesson 077 of Online Column Entrepreneurship. I am Dr. Kirian Mfam. In today's lecture, we will dwell on how to conduct a feasibility study. A feasibility analysis is an in-depth process to determine the factors that will lead a business project to achieve success or failure. Here are steps to be followed when conducting a feasibility study. Step one, conduct the preliminary analysis. Performing a full-blown feasibility study is a time and resource consuming endeavor. So instead of jumping headfirst into this monstrous assessment, it is important to test the waters and conduct pre preliminary analysis. Consider this to be an eligibility qualification before the feasibility study. There are four key steps to performing a preliminary assessment. One, create an idea outline. Outline everything you hope to achieve by taking on the project. And why it is important to your team, your organization, or your business. So the first step is to create an outline of it the idea you want to achieve in the project. Stating the relevance of that idea to your team or to your business. Two, assess the market space for this project. Try to find examples of this type of project and whether or not others have had success in execution. So it is important you consider the market share you are coming to occupy or take control. Three, examine your competitive advantage. What will, you, what will you do differently to ensure that your idea will succeed, such as talent, location, technology? That is, what are you bringing to the table that is new, that will have an added advantage when your, business, when your new business is compared to existing businesses. Four, determine the risk of the project. Risk assessment is a huge part of assessing the viability of any project. Perform a risk assessment to outline anything that may pose a threat to the success of the business. Step two, Create a project scope outline. Now that you have a rudimentary understanding of what you are getting into yourself with this project, it is time to create a scope outline. This outline will, will detail the objectives of the project by using the five feasibility questions as follows. Is this plan technically feasible? That is to say, do you have the technical know-how to implement the project? Two, is this plan legal? That is, the venture that you want to go into, is it a legal venture? Three, is this plan operationally feasible? That is, are you ready with the know-how to handle the, the, the operational functionalities of the business. Four, is this plan feasible within a reasonable period of time? That means, do you have enough time at your disposal to implement the business? And five, is this plan economically feasible? That is, would the revenue that you generate in the course of the business be able to outweigh the, the cost of investment? 
That is, the emphasis is on return on investment. Using these five questions, you will align the coordinates of this project, including what the current situation or issue is that you plan to solve, what you plan to accomplish, estimations of the impact of the project, and what it will take to accomplish this goal. Step three, perform your market research. We use the term market research since it is a common way of describing this step. However, not all projects have to do with competing with other businesses. This step is crucial in discovering the feasibility of your proposed project idea. What better way to find out if your project will be a success than looking to others who have done it before? The five key benefits of market research are one, identification of other market opportunities for your product in terms of new customers, additional users, etc. through focus groups, surveys, and potential client interviews. So in market survey, we are conducting a research on the potential competitors of the business we are trying to establish. And we can achieve this through focus groups, that is to say, uh, identifying customer segments, interacting with them, or conducting surveys, or interviews. Two, insight into your competition, including their products, services, marketing choices, client base, etc. Here we look at the products of your competitors, the services they render, their marketing choices, as well as their, their clientele base. Three, information on the market for your project, including the size and needs of your potential clients. Here we'll look at the needs that you intend to address or the problem you intend to address that will make your customers to patronize you. Four conclusions on whether or not this project has succeeded in the past, what it costs to complete and what success looks like. Then five, insight on the best ways to execute a project, such as a time frame, the required personnel, and even management styles. So in, in, in this last section, we'll look at the time frame that is needed to implement the business so that you start having a return on investment, as well as the personnel that is needed to man the business and the, the management style that's required to deliver business success. Step four, calculate the financial cost. It is only a man that has no experience that will go into a project, start implementing it, without determining the cost implication of starting at all. No matter what kind of project you are proposing, many times it's the financial cost that sinks the feasibility. Because no matter how viable a project is, when there's no financial resources to push it through, the business collapses immediately. All sorts of financial factors will go into determining the feasibility of a project proposal. However, there are a few major considerations that you should keep in mind when making these calculations. One, will your financial resources come from within your organization or from outside financier. There are obvious implications in addressing this concern. If the financial resources is coming from your organization, then there is certainty that the resources will be available <coughs> when they will be needed. However, where the source of, of finance is external, there must also be effort to plan for plan B 
in case the financier will bring some disappointment in releasing funds. Two, what is the financial cost of failure when executing your project? That is, here we are referring to the, the opportunity cost of failing the project. You must determine the opportunity cost in case the project would not kick off. Three, which risk will impose an undue financial burden on your project budget? You must look at the risk element that will bring financial burden to the business. Four, what is the break-even point for profit once a project is off the ground, if applicable? Here, we are looking at a point where profit must be made as soon as the business takes off. Five, how much will you need to complete this project, including risk? Here is a summation of direct cost, indirect cost, and other ancillary costs that will be necessary to ensure the effective implementation of the project. Step five, review your research and present your findings to the project stakeholders or the entrepreneur. The day of reckoning is upon us and it is time to evaluate everything you have uncovered. Com compile it all and present it to the relevant clients or stakeholders or the entrepreneur. Make sure your findings answer all the five feasibility questions. And if each one is answered in the affirmative, that's everything you need to recommend the go ahead for this project. With these, with these five steps, if well implemented and followed critically, it will be very easy to conduct a feasibility study for a micro or small business. Please support all by one, following us on our Facebook page, Online School of Entrepreneurship. Two, subscribing to our YouTube channel, Entrepreneurship Teacher. And three, liking, commenting, and sharing our posts. Thank you and see you in our next lecture.